Hi guys, I'm David with MediaUnlock.net, and today we're going to be doing something a little unusual, and that is we're going to be reviewing a dedicated video camera. Now, if you guys have probably noticed, when I do cameras, I do a lot of DSLR camera bodies, but I've been reading up on this PXW Z100 uh, made by Sony. It's a true 4K video camera, and I've been reading up on it. I thought it would be fun to test it out. I had a few jobs where I thought a dedicated video camera would be nicer over a DSLR. Um, one of the main reasons that a dedicated video camera is much nicer than an interchangeable lens system that doesn't have like a servo built into the lens is that you can get really good, clean, fast autofocus, which you really can't get with a DSLR system. Um, one of the best on the market, in my opinion, is the Sony A7S II, and it's even a little slow. It's still quite sluggish for, for moving from one point to point A to point B in, in a nice, smooth, quick autofocus. So I had some jobs coming up this month that I thought would be a great way for me to really test this camera out and see what I thought. Now, this camera has been out for, I think, three or four years, so it's been out for quite a while. Uh, Sony's been using this kind of same similar body style for quite a while. Uh, they just keep upgrading it with newer and better technology. I remember when the, I think it's the Z1U came out, it was the first like 1080p like Sony camera kind of professional prosumer camera body and it was really awesome. And, uh, and so this is pretty much that, that same body style with like nicer, more upgraded uh, components. So we're going to kind of talk about what I do and don't like about the system. And uh, then we're going to do some close-ups and we're going to go over some of the buttons and functions, just kind of point them out to you. Uh, I'm really impressed with the camera. It really did shoot nice, clean 4K. Uh, one of the things it did excel in that I didn't expect it to excel in, excel in as well is low light capabilities. It can go down to an iris of a 1.6. Now, iris is also the same thing as f-stop or aperture, so if you like to think of it on a lens, it can go down to an iris or an aperture of 1.6, which is really nice. So it did really decent in low light, and as always, we will add some video footage, uh, color corrected and non-color corrected, at the end of this video for your guys viewing to check it out. Um, so like I said, it's been out for three or four years, and uh, the price point is around uh, Four grand, forty-four grand to forty-five hundred, and then if you look on a used basis, uh, you can pick them up probably around uh, around thirty-five hundred dollars. So this is a great kind of run and gun camera. This is going to be good for like uh, YouTube videos, kind of like what I do here at Media Unlocked. It's going to be great for any kind of news. It's going to be an excellent uh, interview camera. So if you're trying to do an interview or anything where the camera is going to be stabilized and you're kind of jumping from one subject to another and you're zooming in and out. Uh, so any, anything like a wedding, it's going, to be, it's going to be a great wedding camera because uh, shooting video in low light, the DSLRs are a little bit harder because of the zoom and the autofocus and your wedding people, you know, your bride and groom are going to want something where you're able to zoom in and out, get nice, clean, smooth zoom and still get that nice, uh, autofocus from one subject to another. So this is where this is going to really excel. And it gives you professional audio like the XLR ports that are on the side, which we're going to get a closer look at here in a minute. So I'm going to go down the list of things I really liked about it, and then we're going to go over a few things I did not like about it. Uh, one of those things being, um, we're going to talk a little bit more, these QXD cards that they use for them uh, really do not like the, the system that they're using for recording the Ford K. But we're going to talk about that a little bit more here in a minute. So as I, as I mentioned, it is a true 4K camera. So it, you, are getting, you are getting full 4K resolution, which is really, really nice. And it looks extremely clean. It records in XAVC at 422 which is really nice, and I didn't find that editing the footage really clogged down my computer. It didn't really slow it down that much. Uh, same thing with the Sony a7S II with uh, S-Log3. I didn't really have any issues, but I have worked with 4K footage that really has slowed my computer down. So far as the editing aspect, uh, it wasn't that bad, and, uh, and I used Adobe Premiere, very easy to edit. Again, the iris or f-stop or aperture goes down to 1.6, which is really nice. Um, a lot of the previous models, I think, were at a 2.4 or a 2.8. So this is going to give you, you know, an extra stop of light, which is going to be really, really nice to have. Uh, shooting in a low light uh, situation, again, that's where I really think this camera would really excel. 
as a wedding uh, for for a wedding videographer. It has uh, its own version of image stabilization, which seemed to work pretty well in my opinion. I did most of the work uh, on a glide cam system or uh, on sticks, a tripod. So I didn't do a lot of handheld work, so I didn't really test out how well that IS system really worked. But again, uh, for a bigger, heavier camera, I think this weighs around six pounds almost, you're really gonna wanna put the camera uh, on sticks or on, on, a, on some form of a, of a glide cam system or some kind of uh, stabilization system just because you're gonna wear yourself out holding this all day long. Uh, as a wedding photographer, I would just throw it on sticks and I would just move the, the tripod throughout the day and then pull it off for any really specific tight shots that you may need. Uh, it does have HDMI out. We did use one of the uh, Aperture Fine HD monitors when we were shooting with the, the glide cam system we threw that on the uh, we used the clamp system through the monitor on there and ran uh, ran 1080p out um, so it was really nice to have 1080p on a monitor uh, while I was shooting because uh, it's, it's kind of hard to see this um, this little tiny monitor when we were using the glide cam system for one of the jobs that we used so it was much easier to run HDMI out so now one thing I did not test out with this camera that I thought was really cool and I just never got around to it before I have to send this back to B&H is that it has a wireless system set up where you can download an app and you can actually control this camera wirelessly. So this is going to be great for someone that may be running a glide cam system and can't really be changing the zoom or the lighting as they're shooting where someone with an external device can control the camera which I think is really really nice. Um, so you do have that option where you can, where you can, it does have a wireless output and you can run it right into uh, an app or something uh, for Android and I think it might work on iOS as well and allowing you to have full control over the camera. So that is a really, really nice and cool function that the camera offers. I unfortunately did not get a chance to test that out, um, but I did read about it in the manual and I was pretty impressed um, that, that this could do that and this, there's a lot of applications where that would be very helpful and handy. As I mentioned, the PXWZ100 has two XLR inputs, which is fantastic to get nice, clean, professional sounding audio. Now they do come with uh, this little shotgun mic when you get it. Uh, it works surprisingly better than the previous Sony shotgun mics I had used in the past. And uh, I, I, I found it to be really nice. There was a couple times when we were shooting and we were running, uh, we're using the wireless lav system that I've got now, the Sony wireless lav system. And then we use this for, uh, for people. So like I was teaching a class and I was talking to people so you could get what I was saying really clearly, but if someone rose their hand to ask a question, it was really nice because the shotgun mic picked up that audio, um, allowing us to be able to have good audio on me, but yet have good audio in the room. And it worked out considerably better than I thought this um, shotgun mic using previous ones that Sony had made for other models like this. Uh, it did really well. Battery life. Uh, so the battery that it comes with, you get roughly two hours of shooting time. I use these Sony batteries for so many different things. I've got like 10 of them, so it was really nice because I never really had to worry about running out of batteries or uh, running out of uh, life with this camera um, when using it. Let's talk about the things I was not crazy on for the PXWZ100. QXD cards, okay? These are ridiculously overpriced in my opinion. Uh, and they're not really interchangeable. They're not interchangeable with a lot of other Sony cameras. So one of the things I had to do, because again, I said I had some jobs and that's really how I was going to test this camera out was by actually using it on some, on some work that I had coming up. I uh, could have easily done it on my DSLR, but I thought it would be nice to have a dedicated video camera to really see how it excels. Uh, I had to spend for a 64 gig uh, QXD card from Lexar, it was about $125. And that gives me right around um, 28 minutes of, of footage. Now it does come with a 32 gig and uh, the 32 gig uh, QXD card gives you about 13 minutes of actual footage. So I'm getting right under 40 minutes, uh, right around 40 minutes for right at 100 gigabytes of footage. So you're going to run through massive amounts of data really quick. You're going to you're really going to run. So if you're shooting a wedding, that would be a drawback is a wedding. If you're going to shoot hours of wedding footage, uh, you're going to have to spend about three, four hundred dollars on cards. 
and you're going to look at three, four hundred gigabytes of footage to go through. Um, so it is going to be, it is a data hog in that aspect. So I wasn't crazy about that. Now you do have two ports. So when one gets full, it directly starts shooting on the next one. If you've got your tripod set on sticks, and you've got a, your computer next to it. The nice thing is you can pull out the, the card that is full and go on and start backing it up. Uh, hopefully by the time it's backed up, the other one's about to be full and you can kind of switch back and forth. So you never really have to stop recording until your battery dies. So that is a plus in that aspect. But again, the cards are expensive. Um, but for a lot of these other models, uh, like the Canon XC10, those cards are extremely expensive as well. So that is one thing you're going to have to take into consideration when thinking about getting this camera. It took me a few days to get through the menu system. I wasn't terribly crazy about it. Um, but once I got it figured out, I was able to navigate it fairly easy. And that really kind of concludes my list of things that I did not like far as problems and issues that I had with the camera. Really the two main issues that I had is these QXD cards, um, just not crazy about them uh, for the price and they're just not, they're not interchangeable with other cameras. Like the SD card, it's so much nicer to be able to take an SD card from one uh, DSLR to another DSLR. I can just interchange my DSLR, DSLRs and SD cards which makes things so much easier. This is kind of uh, camera specific, they're expensive. Um, so I wasn't a crazy fan of that. And you've got to get a whole new card reader. So the card reader cost me like $40 plus a 64 gigabyte card. So I spent about $150 and, um, you know, I can resell them and probably get, uh, you know, 80 to 90% back on what I paid on them. So I didn't take a, a huge loss in that aspect. But if you're going to get this camera, that's going to cost you a little dough. I think this is a great interview camera, a great wedding camera, just a camera to be thrown on sticks and be able to zoom and get nice autofocus um, and still get that really clean looking 4K footage. So uh, let's uh, shoot over to a closer look um, and we're just going to go over um, just some of the buttons and functions so you guys can kind of see them. Now if you guys have used this camera system before like the Z1U, the nice thing is if you're used to using this style of camera, they just keep upgrading to, to bigger and better quality and new options. But for the most part, it's the same camera over and over again. So uh, if you've used other versions, older models of this camera, you're going to feel right at home when you get it because it's really set up pretty similarly as far as your audio functions and stuff like that uh, as the previous models that have come out. So that's kind of the cool thing about the, uh, about the Z, I guess it would be like the Z series. Um, you know, the last one I used was the Z100, which was very, very old. That's six, seven, eight years old. Um, when that first came out, but that camera was awesome. At 1080p, it really was a lot of fun to use. So uh, let's get a closer look. Let's start on the side, because this is where you're going to be doing a lot of your work right out of here. It's, uh, it's a really simple setup. Uh, I was able to pick up the, the side buttons really quick, which I really like. So we can start up here at the top right here. So let's just come up a little bit. And right here, the really nice thing is you can set up these these presettings, so you can have your own little uh, preset settings, which is really nice. Uh, and it's already got these set up, zebra, peaking, thumbnail. So if you want to go in and look at footage that you just shot, or you want to see your peaking or zebras, it's really nice. And you can reassign those if you want to. As well, we've got uh, three ND filters. I think at the third one, it goes to 64. Um, so it's really nice uh, as far as the ND filters are concerned. You have uh, autofocus and manual focus. I mostly used autofocus for the most part. I did test out the manual focus. It worked pretty well. You've got uh, push, so if you just need to focus on something specifically and you're in manual focus, you can kind of do that to help you out. Uh, your audio controls are really, really nice. Uh, that's one thing that I really, really kind of miss with the DSLRs is that you can just get such nice, clean, good audio out of these uh, dedicated video cameras, um, most of them having the XLR built in. Um, you can go into your menu system here and work with your menu system. I did most of my menu system from the top. We'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, your iris is down here, uh, your gain, white balance. White balance is really easy to set up. Uh, right under here, and we can probably zoom in for you. Right under here, it has auto and manual as far as 
pre-settings. Um, I pretty much was in manual the whole time and set up my iris, my white balance, uh, my gain, all that stuff the way I wanted it preset. Uh, shutter speed, if you notice, shutter speed is going to be right here. And, uh, and then this is going to help you get through the menu system as well. It has a button and a wheel. Uh, up at the front, uh, one of the things that's kind of nice is got the built-in uh, lens. So you hit this button right here. And, you know, of course, you can't change the lens, but you've got this built-in lens cover, so you don't have to worry about losing that, which is really kind of uh, very pleasant. Uh, up at the top here, of course, we've got its built-in mic. It's decent. I'm not crazy about it. It does have two hot shoes, one here, and you can set up. It gives you, a, uh, gives you the piece to set one up here on the back. I never really set it up. I only needed one hot shoe at a time. Um, so let's switch over here to the back of the camera. You've got your eyepiece, and let's back this up just a tad bit for you guys. Okay, so XD slots are going to be here. The QXD slots, you've got one A and B. And like I said, the nice thing is you can pop A out and while B starts recording on B. You have two USB here. You have their, I think, Sony Duo stick if that thing's even still around, and you have a SD card right here. I don't really know what the SD card slot is for. Maybe uh, once SD cards get fast enough, the idea is that you could run it off an SD card to still get the 4K. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, you got headphone monitoring up here on the side, which is really nice. Um, I don't know why they're still putting these in, but again, this is four years old. So, uh, but pretty much no one uses these AV component uh, hookups, but it is an option. So if you did need to use them, you do have that. Uh, HDMI, uh, you've got right here at the bottom, uh, you've got SL, you got SDI out, and you got you got your uh, time code, which is really nice if you want to set up time code. So I mean, it does have professional functions, which is really nice. Uh, you've even got a little vent here on the side, so when it gets warm, this little fan will actually come on and uh, and come on and start up to cool down the camera if it does get a little uh, too overheated. Uh, again, you just got your basic, you put your hand through, it's pretty comfortable right here. Uh, we got the XLR ports here. We'll just kind of focus in on that. XLR 1 and 2 or A and B. And then you have some audio functions right here on the back, which is actually really, really nice. So. Uh, and we can zoom in on that for you guys a little bit so you can kind of see them. Uh, so this is really nice. Now we're going to take a look a little bit at the top. We've got uh, an LCD that you can use, as you can see. Um, I didn't use this a lot on the glide cam. I had to throw on the monitor because it was just easier to look down at the monitor while shooting. And then you've got all your functions, I guess, very similar functions we do have here on the side right here at the top. So all in all, at the price point, as I had mentioned, um, I find that this is a tad bit uh, pricier than I'd want to want to spend um, unless I was doing more dedicated interviews and uh, weddings and stuff like that, then I would really look at this camera as a viable option um, because of what it offers. So hopefully this review answers some questions or if you were thinking about getting something uh, similar to this, you just kind of have an idea of what you're looking at. Please click on the link right after this uh, video has finished, right before I do my little outro bit at the end of the video. And you'll be able to click on it and it will send you on over to B&H where you can actually check out the camera and see if it's something that you're interested in. If it is, purchasing it through the link does help the channel keep alive. So uh, I do appreciate it anytime you guys purchase something through one of our B&H links. It really does help out the channel. So you guys have a great day. And as always, we'll catch you next time. All right, so I'm using the uh, onboard audio just so you guys can hear what it sounds like. I am standing behind the camera. I have my buddy Brian in front of us, which if you notice, it is struggling a little bit to focus on him, but it should have pulled focus here. Um, all we're using is a single candle, so you can probably barely see Brian. Uh, I have my shutter speed at 40, my F at 1.7, or iris at a 1.7. I have it set to autofocus, and uh, we're doing the Krubik effect because Brian is a crazy fan of Krubik.
very London song. <laughs> uh, so I just really wanted to see you, show you guys how well the lighting with the candle is. Now, one thing to mention, I did not mention this in the review that I should have. The When you zoom in, so I'm going to zoom in on his face, we're actually going to lose some light because as you zoom in, like with a DSLR camera, um, certain lenses, at, at full zoom, it goes to uh, an iris or aperture of uh, 3.6. So fully zoomed out, we can go as low as a 1.6, 1.7. We're at a 1.6 right now. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can't brighten this up a tad bit with the gain. So now we're going to get a lot of noise, as you probably notice. Again, we're at 4K at 24 frames per second, 4,096 by 2,160. Again, uh, XAVC, 23.9 frames per second, pretty much 20, 24 frames per second. Um, as you can see, Brian, my buddy Brian here, we're getting a lot of noise when we do the gain. So, uh, but this is, again, no light. The only light coming from, um, the only light we've got coming into the lens is from a, a candle. And you can see the candle, and you can probably, I'm going to try to see my hand. My hand's kind of pointing. But if you look right under his face, there's a little bit of light, and that's where the candle's coming from. And it's going out of focus a little bit. It is struggling to focus a little bit. But I just kind of wanted to show and and uh, kind of want to show you guys the audio and go over a few settings and let it let you guys see so it in my in my opinion it's got really decent low light capabilities here um, you can see Brian's face fairly well with the uh, gain all the way up um, if we turn the game back off uh, the footage you know the um, the noise gets a lot better but again the visibility goes down quite a bit so uh, just want to show you guys this So these settings right here, these are going for your whole entire, you're going to work on your whole entire photos. These settings right above it that we kind of went over, the brush tool, I wish I had a freaking laser pointer. Uh, <laughs> that would make it so much easier. Yeah. Those settings are going to how you manipulate specific things within the photos. Hey guys, if you'd like to check out our website where we have all kinds of fun and exciting blogs, videos, and extra information that isn't on our YouTube page, click right here. If you'd like to talk to us or contact us and kind of take a look at all the different stuff that we have going on, um, we've kind of funneled it all through our Facebook. You can hit our Facebook page right here and follow us or like us. Now if you'd like to look at cool pictures and behind the scenes stuff, we do that on Instagram right here. So go on and follow us on Instagram. And of course, we got our cute little bird right here, Mr. Twitter, and you can follow us as we do our short tweets.